So now that we've gotten pretty good at the first two shapes, those blocked shapes, let's start with slant shapes. Let's go ahead and get to work on shape three. So to build it, we're going to start with a obviously a new standard part. Don't do sheet metal, do part. And this time I'm going to try building a big block and cutting out the rest. Just to show you there's multiple ways to build. Before we built like with pieces already missing, we drew, we didn't draw a big block. We just drew the outline of what we already saw and went from there. But today I'm going to build a giant chunk and chink away the rest. So I'm going to start with a new sketch and I'm going to do the front view. And I'm going to click my rectangle tool. And just like before, I'm going to lock it onto the center so it can't move. And I'm going to give it some dimensions. It looks like it's 2.25 wide. And it is 1.5 tall. Pretty standard for these shapes, actually. Okay, and then I finish my sketch. Now that it's completely blue, it means it's fully constrained. And I'm going to extrude it, and it looks like it extrudes 1.5. And you might say, well, wait, Mr. Anderson, this doesn't look anything like this shape. This shape has things cut out of it. It has parts missing that this doesn't. Well, yeah, we're going to do that now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut out this big blocked shape. I'm going to go to a new sketch on this face. And I'm going to draw a rectangle. Now, you can draw the rectangle and then add the collinear constraint after, or you could lock it on at first. To get it lock on, what you need to do is you need to make that little yellow dot magnetize. You see how it kind of locks on and that line gets a little bit darker? That tells you that it's locked onto that line. If it's not darker, then it's not locked onto that line. It doesn't magnetize on. So I'm going to click and drag. And if you miss it, no big deal. Let's say I tried to lock it onto this one, but I missed. Well, the top one's blue because it's locked on. It's collinear. I can't move it up and down. The bottom one's green because I missed it. If you miss it, no big deal. Use your collinear constraint. I click on the two lines I want to be the same line, and there you go. Now, this is green because, well... We haven't told it what to be yet. It's two dimensions needed. I need to add two more before it's, before it's fully constrained. That's what that means when it says that right there. So I like to go to my home view so I can see what I'm looking at. I can go back and forth from home or isometric to my front view. And I look, well, the length of these or this edge to the outside edge, the length of the rectangle, inner rectangle to the outside edge, and I missed it, so I need to click it again. The length between these two lines, it says right here, is 0.75. And the same is true over here. If we look now, it says it's fully constrained, which means it can't move. Another way to tell that it's fully constrained is that it's blue. It means I can't add any more dimensions. It means we're good. I can finish my sketch. And if I look, I can see that this inner shape, not the outer shape, the inner shape, cuts a distance of 0.75. You might kind of start seeing what we're building here. You can see if I just looked at the bottom, it kind of looks like this shape. But this weird slant's cut out of it. So it looks like it's cut out of the side here. So let's go ahead and go to the new sketch on the side view. And from here, I'm going to draw this triangle shape that's kind of missing right here. If you look, it's kind of triangular shaped. If you don't see it yet, hopefully you will by the end of the video. So I could lock it on and measure it out, but I like just, I'm just going to draw a quick triangle and connect it. It doesn't really matter that I messed it up, because we're going to learn two new constraints now. I want this line to be horizontal. I want it to not be at this weird angle. So I'm going to add a horizontal constraint. And I want this one to be vertical. Now, they're there. Now, I could have also made it collinear, which I was going to do anyway. But I wanted you to see those two constraints. So I want you to be aware of them. Horizontal constraint and a vertical constraint. How do I know what they are? Because I hovered over them and I read what it said it does. And then I looked at the pretty picture. And it shows you an example. So I use it there. Now I can make it collinear. Cool Again, I didn't need this, but I wanted you to see the constraints. They're kind of cool. But it's not done. There's two more dimensions needed. Now it looks like there's only one green line, but yeah, but we need to know what length this edge is. And this edges. I can change both. So those are the two dimensions I need. Well, if we look at the pretty picture, I can tell that this, let's go to home view, this is 0.25 from the bottom, the bottom corner of my triangle. So I need dimension 
bottom line to this edge to be 0.25. And if you miss it, sometimes you got to click it over and over again. You just got to and hit Control Z. Sometimes when you click it, you click the point, not the line. Sometimes when you click, it doesn't actually drag it out. You just got to hit Cancel and do it again. If you click the line instead. If you notice, the line gives you an angle because they're not perpendicular. They need to be perpendicular to each other, like this point and this edge, to give you a distance or parallel. But they can't be at an angle. This point two five. And if I look up here, I can tell that this distance from the back to the front is 0.5 and now it's fully constrained so I'm done I can finish my sketch I can extrude cut distance all and now it looks a lot more like my shape and then make sure you go to save and save it as shape 3